Welcome back, baseball fans. Summer 6972 Carryover League. We are moving through now into the second round of our five game eliminations. Just a quick review of what happened when the top seeds in the five games met. It was Wipeout as Boston and California and the Cincinnati Reds and the New York Mets won 10 in a row against teams who were trying to compete for a number one or number two seed. We started with the Reds blowing out the Dodgers three straight. The Reds and the Dodgers met last year in the, Mer in the National League Division Series and the Reds swept them four straight. So that's seven straight wins over the Dodgers. The Dodgers fall into a number three seed with a 23 and 18 record, and they have to hold on to their lead against the Giants, who are three over 500, and the Astros, who are two over 500. Then the Mets made quick work of Las Vegas, giving up one run in three games, improving their record to 21 and 13. Better than the Dodgers for the number two seed, not to mention that the Mets and Dodgers played in the regular season. The Mets handled the Dodgers three games to one, so they have the tiebreaker. That put Las Vegas in, uh, in peril, trying to win the uh, expansion team division, as we like to call it, the Mountain Division. But they're 20 and 18. Their closest challenger is Portland at zero games above 500, a.k.a. 18 and 18. Then, in the American League, it gets worse. Boston played the Twins in Fenway, and the Twins had no clue what was going on and got ambushed by a combined score of 18-1 to in two games. Boston's your number one in the American League, and now the Twins have a leaking ship in first place at 19-16, and but being challenged by the Kansas City Royals, who are tied with them with the same record, three over 500, and even the White Sox are still sniffing around at a game over 500. Lastly, the California Angels, a worst to first story from a year ago. Somehow, they started hot, then they went into a slump, and now they're currently hot. They started 8 and 1, then they went through a stretch where they were 8 and 13, and now they're currently have won 7 of the last 8 to get to this 23 and 15 record. They're in the number two spot currently. And that meant that the Tigers, representing the America League North, a division that was 17 games under 500 going into the, this round of the tournament, well, now they're 19 games under 500, is the Tigers are in first place at 18 and 20. That's all right. <laughs> the Expos came into the series three games under 500, and then that Ohio Players team came in the series five games under 500. Of course, Cleveland got eliminated a while ago in the first round. They, they're regretting that, as it, it shouldn't have been that hard to stay alive in this terrible division. So, we got our hands full now as we have a bunch of divisions up for grabs after these four teams gave themselves a well-deserved two-week vacation. We won't see them till the, till the divisional round series, which is not going to be till the end of August. So congratulations, guys, on your well-deserved rest. Now over here in this column, to the left here, column A, this is the combined games over 500 of each matchup. So you see the White Sox are game over 500 playing the Orioles, who are 7 over 500 for a total of 8. So the order in which I play these matchups is worst to best. This is sort of like that expression where you win and need help. This is when a team has a chance to make the playoffs if a bunch of other factors happen. So they play the game, then when the game's over, they get in the clubhouse, they turn the TV sets on and watch all the other games that are happening. We've seen this in baseball and football as well. I'm sure you've seen it all. And that's where we start tonight with this rather unusual series with a team, Seattle, who didn't exist during this period, and an Expos team who just started existing in 1969. The Expos are game under 500. Excuse me, the Mariners are game under 500. Expos are three games under 500. And before the series starts, there is some really kooky math involved here. 
Only the four best teams get an invitation to the third round of the tournament. And let's look at the records. The White Sox and the Orioles. Well, the Orioles, the worst they can do is be four over 500, so they're going to the next round regardless. The worst the White Sox can do is if the uh, Orioles beat them two straight, then it would be minus one. The Yankees are playing Kansas City in a best of five. Neither team can get a losing record after they play. And then you have this mess out west with a negative five Ohio player against o Oakland. So what this means is for Seattle, if they win the series by the smallest margin in a best of five, three games to two, they would have a record at 500. And they would need four teams to be worse than them. So for Seattle to get an invitation in the third round based on that happening, the White Sox would have to lose two to the Orioles and Oakland would have to get beat up against this Ohio player team. And then Seattle might get an invitation. Obviously, every game better than that that Seattle plays uh, furthers their chances. Now for the Expos, it gets even more curious because they have less of a shot at a wild card as they're worse than Seattle, but they have a decent shot, or we thought, at winning their own division, where the Detroit Tigers were two under 500. So here's the scenario. If the Expos lose twice, they're, they're out. They don't get to go to the third round. But if they win the series three games to one, they would get a one game playoff against the Detroit Tigers to determine the American League North winner. And if the Expos sweep Seattle three straight, then ladies and gentlemen, the Expos are the winners of the America League North and the number four seed in the America League playoffs. Unbelievable. So, what happens? Series is opening up in Expo land. They have home field advantage in this series. They have a chance of winning a division title. The excitement is palpable in, in the Expo land. So what do they do in game one? Well, they get blown out 11 to nothing by Seattle. In the third inning, they walk in a run, and then that's followed up by a Joe Pepitone Grand Slam. Then in the fourth inning, with the bases loaded, they single in a run, and that's followed by a Lee May Grand Slam. Not the first baseman, the uh, left-handed outfielder from the Washington Senators. Another home run late in the game by our boy Pepitone, and it's an 11-0 shutout courtesy of Steve Klein, having a fine year. He beats up on Bill Stoneman. So, this is good news for the Detroit Tigers. It means, worst case, they have a one-game playoff if um, they have to play it all, or they could still have a chance of getting uh, the division clinched. Game two, the Expos come back, and this is a fine baseball game. It's a 3-2 game. These two teams have pretty good defense, and they battle. They don't have a lot in the offense. It's a 3-2 victory for Steve Ranko, getting some relief help from Mike Marshall. He beats Dick Woodson, the number four starter. And the series is tied a game apiece. This doesn't help either team. Well, it helps the Expos. It doesn't help the Mariners much, as we said before, that Mariners can't afford to lose many games in the series. But... Game three, series goes across the country, 3,000 miles to Seattle. And in game three, those Seattle Mariners return the 3-2 victory with all three runs coming in the first inning off of Baylor Moore, a gritty left-hander for the Expos who buckled down after that. But those three runs in the first were too much for the Expos to come back from. Bob Bailey solo homer. Mac Jones solo homer was the only scoring. Skip Lockwood. Eight solid innings for the victory. Lou Marone, all-star closer, gets the save. And that means that the Expos season will be done after the next game or two. Based on poor record. They are not getting an invitation to the third round. And somewhere the Detroit Tigers are laughing as they've just won the America League North two games under 500. So, here we are, game four. We have the Expos <laughs> playing spoiler, trying to knock the Mariners out of a playoff chance, in which the Mariners probably won't get a playoff chance. 
the Expos come back to win this series three games to two, then both these teams can go home, which is fine, fine by me. So game four here in Seattle, we go back to the game one starters for the Expos, Bill Stoneman for the Mariners, Steve Klein. Let's get rolling in the five game elimination series. Boots Day leads it off. 47, bounce of the second. This is Jerry Adair, 313. Gives up a single. Boots is a B stealer plus two. He's gonna try a stolen base here, and he's thrown out on a 20. They try to get aggressive, it didn't work. Adolfo Phillips, 412, skies the right. Rusty Staub, 48, bounces the short. This is Dale Maxvale, 219, makes the play. And bottom of the first. Ted Ulander leads it off. 57's a K. Jerry Adair, 1-6. Bounce to short. Lee May, 35. Double one, base hit. And with two outs, the all, well, the snubbed all-star, John Ellis. 1-8, another base hit for John Ellis. Toying with the American League batting title. Yes, folks. Toying with it. I think he's hitting 370. But Carew will most likely win the thing at around 400. Yeah, it's been that kind of year for the Seattle, the upstart Seattle Mariners. Two on, two out. Joe Pepitone, two seven. Let's take a look at Joe Pep's card here. Can play first base, can play center field for you. Can play for the Yankees, can play for the Cubs. Doesn't really matter. Here he gets picked up by Seattle. They love the guy. Two seven, double one to eleven. That's a double and the M's. Shall we call them the M's back in 1969 since they don't exist? Pilots aren't around. <laughs> Pilots have already morphed into the Milwaukee Brewers and the Seattle Seahawks exist. It's almost as if the Seattle Pilots were never there. Kurt Moten, 1-9, base it in the center field. Pepitone is a 14 runner, 16. Against the Boots Day arm, we'll try and score from second and he's thrown out the plate on a 20. But they get a second run and it's two zip. Bob Bailey. 410, lines the first. Ron Fairley, 2 5, Homer 1 to 5, double, and it's gone. 2 1, Bateman, 1 5, short. And Mac Jones rolls with the pitcher. Bottom of two, Dave May, 110, pitcher. Dale Maxville, 59, is a bouncer to short. Woodward, Woodward's a 3 e 26 at shortstop, and he makes the play. Tom Match. Chick, this guy's the right. Go to the third. Gary Sutherland, 69, pops to first. Woody Woodward, two tens a K. Boots Day, 510, catcher's card. This is Ellis, is a 4016. Known for his bat, not his glove, but he makes the play. Ted Ulander again, 4 4. Ulander, no, Ulander, the pilot's arguing about. There are duties there. 4 4, U Lander off the Stoneman card. Homer 1 to 11. Double. He has power, and that's gone. U Lander had eight homers and 600 plate appearances, and it gave him power in 1969. He was a twin. Interesting. Now I think about it. Uh, Brant Alea on the Rockies. He was a twin. And Ted U Lander is on this team. He was a twin. I wonder if the twins needed those guys. That's the that's what happens in the expansion of a league. Jerry Adair, 2-7, base hit. Lee May, 2-6, six, 6-4, six, three double play. John Ellis, 2-9, lines a third. 3-1 in the fourth. Do the Expos rally. Adolfo Phillips, walks, B stealer. Rusty Staub, 6-10, center X. This is Dave May. He's a 2-E7 in center field. He makes the grab. Bob Bailey, 58, flies the center. MB stealing Adolfo Phillips will try a stolen base, and he's in there on a 10. Runner at second, two outs for Ron Fairley, who homered earlier. 48's a bouncer to short. And one of the guys the Mariners kept around is Dale Maxfield, because he's a 2 at shortstop, and that can help a lousy team if you have some defense to keep you in games. And he gets the play there, and it's 3-1, Mariners. Mariners are playing this game for a winning record beyond anything else. They're sitting at 500 at 21 and 21. Joe Pepitone, 35, sky's the right. 
Kurt Moten, 57K. Dave May, 66, flies to right. Top of the fifth, John Bateman, 34. Bounce to short. Mac Jones, 53, first C. Gary Sutherland, 53 again, right-handed, right X. That would be Ulander, 2E1 in right field. Good defense, but gives up a single in that situation. Woody Woodward, 2-4. Let's take a look at Woody's card. Nice little middle infielder. Actually played for the Reds in 69. Got picked up by the Expos here. 2-4, double one of sevens. A single out done. You got runners on the corners. For the Boots of Day, one of the great nicknames of this era, along with all the great nicknames the Expos have. Adolfo, Rusty, Mac, Woody, Coco, Ron. You know, good, good nicknames. Anyway, Boots Day, there's the card there. Um, he's got runners on the corners with two outs in the fifth inning. The pitch to Boots Day, 111, pops to first. It stays three to one. Before we move to the fifth, let's pause a moment for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. All right, bottom of the fifth. Mariners can kind of smell it. <laughs> so they can kind of smell victory in their first year of, of pre-existence, if you want to call it that, since they didn't exist till 77. And we rolled back the clock so they can exist in 1969. Dale Maxwell, 63. Pitcher X, Stoneman is an E6. Makes the play. Tom Matchick, 2-4. Ground ball to second. Two outs, you lander. 611. Pitcher X. Again, 2E6, but it's a base hit this time. B Stealer. Bateman's got a minus two arm though, so he will hold. For Jerry Adair, 1-8 bounces short. 3-1 game in the sixth inning. Dolfo Phillips. 2-8's gonna be a walk. Rusty Staub. Laurent's Grand, the Grand Orange. Oh no, Rusty, please don't tell us. Three, four is a four, six, three, double play, and Expo fans all over the world are sad right now. Three to one, Bob Bailey, 47, Steve Klein, bouncer to second. This is Jerry Adair, he's a three, 13, and he makes the play. Bottom of the sixth, Lee May, 64, catcher's card, Bateman is a three, nine, T1 to 12, interestingly. 3E9 makes an error. Rare error on a catcher. We'll get there as much. John Ellis, let's take a look at the card. Just because I mentioned him and his all star snub and his rather high, ridiculous batting average. He's got a hit in this game. John Ellis, 411 off Stoneman. Skies to right field. And this is Mac Jones in right field is a 3E14. And that'll be a double. Dot, dot, dot. Scoring. Lee May all the way from first base, and it's four to one. Joe Pepitone, two five. Did we look at Pepitone's card? I think we did, but let's look at it again. Homer, one to eight, double. That's gonna be a double. And Joe Pep, who had two homers in game one and two RBI in this game, looks like your series MVP if we keep track of that kind of thing when both teams have losing records. I guess you don't really have an MVP. Anyway. Five to one, runner at second, still nobody out for Kurt Moten, 45. Double one to two, Bill Stoneman getting rocked here. It's a 6-1 game. Oh my, let's see here. Um, yeah, he's gone. Sorry, Bill, rough year. Rough year for a really good pitcher. Stoneman, by the way, if you're curious, for the 71 Expos. 17 and 16 with a 314 ERA in 295 innings. He was a workhorse. But in this series against Seattle, he has been blitzed for 17 runs and 15 innings. The crazy Seattle Mariners. You can get on the bandwagon. I don't know if it's going to get out of the station, but you're welcome to. The Mariners playing great baseball, and it might be all for naught, as we expect the Orioles, Royals, Yankees, and possibly Oakland A's all to advance in the next round, leaving Seattle uh, in the Trail of Tears. So anyway, let's not uh, get into that. We're way too early to think about that. 
John Morris will come on in the sixth inning. The runner at first and nobody out to pitch to Dave May. 48, Dave May. Single one to 17 is a base hit. Two on for Maxville. He's going to bunt in the sixth inning as a beat bunter. Don't, that, don't do that very often, but as bad as Maxville, you want to bunt, and that's good. Second and third, they're going to bring the infield up for Tom Matchick. 2-4. Center be question mark. We have a chance to run Kurt Mutton. It's a 15 runner. 16-17. Minus two on our boot stay. He's going to run. And he's going to score on a 15. He just barely beats the tag. Nice throw. But a strong runner. We get a sack fly after a sack bunt. And it's a 7-1 game. Smart baseball by the Mariners. With two outs. It's Ted Ulander. 54. Third X. Bob Bailey's a 4E23 at third base, but he makes the play. 7-1 lead for Steve Klein. He's uh, been the opposite of Stoneman. He's given up one run in 15 innings in this series. I guess he should be the series MVP instead of Pepitone, but anyway. Ron Fairley, 3-6. Take a look at the Fairley card. Fairley at 12 homers and half a year of 1969 for the Pose, and it's 7-2. John Bateman, 6'10", center X. This is Dave May up two in center field, makes the grab. Mac Jones, 38 is a K. And with two outs, Gary Sutherland, 54. Homer one to seven, double is a double. And Woody Woodward, 3-6 is a grounder to the short. Stretch time here in Seattle of a 7-2 game. We've been listening to Thin Lizzy's 72 LP, Shades of a Blue Orphanage, Buffalo, 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 Buffalo Gal, Whiskey in the Jar. That's coming up next. That's a, that's a hot tune. Let's put it on now. Shall we? Yeah, there we go. All right, bottom of the seventh inning. Mariners are feeling it. Have a 7-2 lead. Jerry Adair leads it off for the Mariners. 45, bounce to short. Woodward, 326, base hit. Batting for Lee May. Ron Woods. Woods, 48, base hit in the right field. And Adair will hold it second. For John Ellis, two on, nobody out. 58, sky's the center. Joe Pepitone. 43. Pitcher X, E0. It's going to be tough to get out of this mess. Oh, a single off the uh, two pitcher who's an E0. That's a really tough break for the Expos. Kurt Martin, 56. Sack fly to left. He'll leave as DH for Jim Price to catch and Ellis to go to DH. That's all the defense they have. Dave May with two outs. These guys are right. 8-2 in the eighth. Klein's not going anywhere. Boot stay. 37. Sky's the center. Dolfo Phillips K. And Rusty Stahl. 56. Triple one to three. Base it. And with two outs, Bob Bailey. 5 12. Grounds the first. 8 2 game. This one's in the bag. Let's turn this down a little bit. All right. 8 2 Mariners. Bottom of the eighth. John Morris will leave. We'll go Jim Bouton in the eighth. For the Expos, how disappointing this whole division has been. Nobody from the American League North can do anything productive. I mean, it's unbelievable that the Cleveland Indians couldn't even get into this round when you see how poorly the Expos and Tigers have played. Anyway, Dale Maxville, 1-7, base hit. Tom Matchick, 58, lines of first. Ted Ulander, 56, flies the right. If the Mariners win this game, that's really putting the pressure on the Chicago White Sox. It looks like they would have to do the remarkable and beat the Orioles four games to one because I don't think they're going to be able to pass this uh, Seattle team. Jerry Adair, 57, is a K. And Oakland, who was a game ahead of Seattle, you know, they... they uh, are playing a team that they only have to beat twice. So if that team beats them twice, 
best they can do is stay with the same record, splitting four games. Ninth inning of an 8-2 affair, and yes, we are going to pull Mr. Klein after eight brilliant innings and bring in the often used, if you've been following the Seattle Mariners the last couple years, <laughs> Lou Marone's coming on in the ninth. First time he's been in a competitive game in a long, well, in his whole entire career since he only pitched in 1969. Aside from the All-Star game being competitive games. Anyway, Lou Marone has a chance to put the Seattle Mariners into consideration for the third round if he can get three outs. Fairly leads off the ninth. 2-5, triple one to 16, a triple, and he is three for four in all of the Expo offense today. John Bateman. 1-4, homer, 1-3, double, and it's gone. Uh-oh, and the stage might be a little too big for Lou Marone here. It's now 8-4. Mac Jones, 58, pops the third. Hmm, let's get some pinch hitters in here. Batting for Gary Sutherland will be Coco LaBoy. Coco, the pitch, 43, left X. This is... Ron Woods is a 2-E-8. And he makes the grab. And with two outs, the Expo season falls in the hands of Woody Woodward. The pitch to Woody, 1-8 is a single. They stay alive. Boots Day is the batter. He has on bases on his card, and all we need is an on base. We don't need a home or anything. And the bench is Bobby Wine and Ron Brand. That doesn't inspire confidence. So Boots will bat. With a runner at first and two out off of Lou Marone. The pitch to Boots Day. 4-12 is a sky to right. It is a sloppy ninth inning, but it's effective enough for the Mariners. How about that, folks? The Seattle Mariners beat a team who could have been the number four seed in the playoffs this year in the American League. And they would have been, if the Expos would have won this division, they would have had a higher seed than the defending world champion Baltimore Orioles, who may not win the American League East because the Red Sox are too far ahead. So that didn't happen. And the Mariners win this series three games to one. Let's do the box here. And they find this, their, themselves a game over 500. Lou Marone, a sloppy ninth inning, giving up three hits and two runs. But he had a nice lead there. Another great start for Steve Klein, who pitched for the Yankees during this era. The Mariners advance. They may have to play the Yankees if they advance. Gave up the two solo home runs, two walks, and three strikeouts. Bouton came on in the ninth. His career might be over after this game. I think he doesn't play after 69. John Morris came in in the sixth. Faced Dave May. He got four singles and a run. No walks or Ks. Another terrible start for Bill Stoneman, who had a very uneven season as the ace of the Expos. But every pitcher in this division had a terrible year, really. We have uh, a total of four earned runs. No walks, two strikeouts. 1 009 0108. 8 15 4 10. 2 3 3. That was a game number four. Could only eliminate one team tonight, not two. So the Seattle Mariners are going to have to get their cable TV and watch the uh, Oriole White Sox series very closely. They're going to have to watch the Oakland Ohio Players series very closely and pull for the Oakland to lose and the White Sox to lose. If that happens, they can advance to the next round. So there it is. The Mariners are 22 wins and 21 losses. They're hitting 246 with a 383 team ERA. The Expos came into this series 3 under 500, and now they are... Five under 500. Cleveland, who got eliminated in the last series, fin uh, finished the year nine games under 500. Ohio is five under 500. <sighs> sad, sad year for the America League North. The division as a whole is 21 games under 500. 
242 year for the Expos, 385 ERA. Bill Stoneman got rocked in those two games, finishing the year at 6-6. Six and six. And uh, when we look at the overall standings in the America League at the present time, you'll see right there the Tigers, 18 and 20. And the Ohio players are game and a half behind, but they got to play the Oakland A's. And they would have to, technically, they'd have to win four straight games against the Oakland A's to force a one-game playoff against the Tigers. So I guess technically the, the Tigers haven't officially clinched, though. They pretty much have. We're talking about the Dynasty A's here. And they're the Mariners. Three and a half games. Same situation that the Oakland A's are in. But they're also a game over 500 along with the White Sox. But when we're looking at four non-division leaders to advance to the next round, we're looking at Orioles, Yankees, either the Royals or Twins, whoever's in second place if the Royals play the Yankees, and probably Oakland... Um, and if the incredible happens where, where Oakland gets smoked by the Ohio players, then I guess uh, the Seattle Mariners or the Chicago White Sox could fill their spot. That's it tonight from the American League. Hope you're enjoying, enjoying the wild and wacky second round five game eliminations of the postseason tournament as we try and whittle out the next eight teams to eliminate. And tonight we got rid of one of them, the Expos. We'll see you next time.